Hi, I'm Vanessa from Jettle and today we're going to be talking about Ujuru Nunakul's context and the way it shapes her poems. Before we jump into this video, make sure you subscribe to our channel or head over to jettle.com to get even more comprehensive resources about your texts. There are three main elements of Nunakul's context that you need to know about and the most important to begin with is post-colonialism. To understand post-colonialism, you need to know what colonialism is. It's basically the time period where many countries, but in this case the British, came to another country and invaded, settled it, and started to build a colony there. And what this meant in Australia is that there was a lot of violence against Aboriginal people. They became dispossessed of their land, their land was taken from them, and there became a sequence and series of events that to this day we still experience. And that's what post-colonialism is all about. It's looking at the consequences and the sort of negative legacy of colonization that people are still living to this day. In the case of Nunakul as an Indigenous woman, she's writing about issues relating to the way Indigenous people had their culture and their language suppressed or erased. Uh, there were forced separations leading to the stolen generation. And basically Indigenous people had their history totally wiped away as if they didn't exist. And we see this even as things progressed in, our, in Australia's history. We had things like the White Australia policy, which now we would think is inherently racist, and other policies around assimilation, which were designed in a, sort of, in a way to sort of erase and uh, disguise what had happened to Indigenous Australians during colonisation. The reason this is important is that post-colonial texts like uh, Nunakul's poetry are actually rewriting this period of history and are revising these different narratives to show a different version of history and to revive the culture of Indigenous people in order to uh, challenge those traditional colonial narratives. And we see this in many of Nunakul's works, particularly in her poems like The Past, where she is uh, describing what has happened to Indigenous people uh, and offering a counter perspective or a different perspective to what was given initially uh, as a result of colonial perspectives of Indigenous culture. The other key consideration you should have with context is Aboriginal spirituality, which was really important to Nunakul's poetry. We can see this in many of her poems, particularly where she references the dreaming or the dream time, which is the Aboriginal spiritual belief system and origin stories that define their uh, culture and identity. Things like Aboriginal people's connection to the land is a really important thing because it's a spiritual sort of law in which the land is respected and gives life and gives uh, connections to the past. And we also see this as well in references to the rainbow serpent, which is a sort of mother earth archetype and deity of the Aboriginal people. And it's a reoccurring motif in many of her poems. We see the rainbow serpent appear again and again. And what all of these things do is connect back to Aboriginal spirituality and the belief system that Nunakul is writing from. We can see this with a particular example here in the poem Reed Flute Cave, where many of the references to the dream time link back to uh, the context and values of Aboriginal spirituality. So in an essay, you may say something like, Nunakul links the setting of China's reed flute cave with her own cultural context of the dream time, employing apostrophe at the beginning and the end of the poem to evoke the presence of my rainbow serpent, my earth mother within the cave. So we have a few things to note in this way we've set up our analysis. Firstly, we have jumped in straight away to the cultural context of her indigenous spirituality, making it clear that this links back to the dream time. And then from there, we've linked the context and the values to the technique, which in this case is apostrophe. She's speaking directly to the rainbow serpent and tying that into our quote seamlessly. So the quote is integrated in our analysis. And as a result, we've established how the context links to the technique, which links to the quote and explained the reason it is important, its emphasis, that it is allowing her to connect with her spirituality anywhere. And the reason this is important is because many of these different contextual elements link together. You could say that post-colonialism links with Aboriginal spirituality because as a post-colonial poet, Nunakul is actually writing in order to elevate the voice, the experience and the culture of Indigenous people. So we can see the way the context actually links 
with other elements of her spirituality, her background, her culture and identity. The other key point of context you need to know about is her 1984 visit to China. So Nunakul actually went overseas as a delegate of Australia with several other delegates to China during a period of transitional politics. China was going through a time where their previous leader Mayo had died, um, it had gone through a cultural revolution and now Australia was trying to establish new trading opportunities and new sort of political, uh, geopolitical opportunities with that country. So as a result, in order to establish those economic opportunities, they needed to establish a cultural connection with the country as well. And Nunakul was a part of the delegation that went to China to do this. And what's interesting about her experience is that unlike the other people who went to China with her, she was the only Aboriginal Australian. So she was kind of representing a dual uh, identity of Australia, both Australia as well as Indigenous Australia in her journey. And we can see this in her poems because she connects really deeply with the Chinese people as a result of her Aboriginal spirituality. We see this in many of her poems where she's reflecting on the way that, for instance, her ancestors are present or her spiritual uh, de deities of Aboriginal um, I, you know, culture are present in these Chinese landscapes. This is significant because in China, many of their sort of ancient um, belief systems also included ancestor worship and were very similar to Nunakul's beliefs that ancestors and the spirits of her ancestors are alive. So she begins to connect with her Chinese experiences to have cross-cultural experiences of these places where she is linking her own culture to the cultures of others and while pointing out differences, also recognizing there are greater similarities connecting cultures than there are differences. And many of her poems do this where we see how her Aboriginal spirituality and cultural identity connects with or is sort of building on the same spirituality or beliefs as the Chinese people. We see this in the way that China woman, she celebrates the victory of the Chinese people, their government in being able to uh, give power back to the people. And this complements her own fight for civil rights back in Australia as an Aboriginal person. So we can see the many, many crossovers in the way that her context as an Aboriginal person also shapes her response to cross-cultural experiences in her trip to China. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe and check out our website, jettle.com, to find even more resources like this.